Reed. Philly's tortured fans faithfully echo a familiar call. Philadelphia Eagles at practice, the game against the Atlanta Falcons, two halves would add up to equal a win for Nick Foles and the Eagles. The second half, definitely a better performance from Foles. Did it give him confidence? How confident is the quarterback? Here's Doug Peterson on number nine. Nick, from preparation, the same. Nothing's changed there. Uh, I would say that, uh, uh, you know, obviously having a game like he had and, and as efficient as he was, um, it just boosts confidence, you know, going forward. He, he's Nick is Nick. I mean, he comes to work every single day and does the same thing every single day and, and prepares the same. And, and there's not a lot that really, you know, gets under his skin. But I've seen, I've seen a little more confidence in him. It's not hard to get motivated for, for this week and, and the opportunity in front of our football team right now. Let's go back to Philadelphia. James Palmer is there. Um, you know, James, we're, we're looking at this team, and something Doug Peterson has said extensively since Carson Wentz went down, it's not about one guy. The, the roster that Howie Roseman and them have put together r really makes that something that they can say and get away with. You're exactly right, and that's why Howie Rosen was named executive of the year the first time an executive here in Philadelphia has won that award, and you saw really the focus there on Nick Foles. He brought in Nick Foles, signed him. Foles was contemplating retirement. He comes in here and is now an integral part of their possibility of getting to the Super Bowl. He signed Alshon Jeffrey. He signed Torrey Smith. You look at the trades that he has made as a general manager. He has made a ton of trades in that spot and you look what he's done this season bringing in Ronald Darby the Jay Ajayi trade for a fourth round pick and everything he's done in the draft as well obviously moving up for Carson Wentz getting them a franchise quarterback is a big aspect of how they had a 13 and 3 record this season and with all the injuries that they have had because of the depth of the roster that he has put together they are still one of the final four teams remaining you look at Jalen Mills makes that big play the cornerback against Julio Jones last week he's a seventh round pick that they've developed in just his second year so this roster that he has put together Howie Roseman deserves a lot of credit. He got it today. Obviously, Doug Peterson and the players executing on the field obviously should get a lot of credit as well for the stop that the Eagles are in right now. Yeah, James, and so Doug Peterson has all those chess pieces. How does he plan on utilizing them in this upcoming uh, chess match against that Vikings defense? That Vikings defense, we know that Mike Zimmer likes to disguise what they do defensively quite a bit. Harrison Smith, what he's going to do pre-snap, that's one thing that Nick Foles has to keep his eye on. And they try to delay it as much as possible. And to help out Nick Foles, this offensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles is very important. And you look at them, they're a pretty talented group. Jason Kelsey, an all-pro at center. Many call him another quarterback on the field because of his intelligence. But also Stefan Wisniewski, their guard. His intelligence and former play at center around the NFL, talking to Lane Johnson this week, he told me it's almost like having another center, another really intelligent guy on the offensive line that can detect things pre-snap, where guys' hands are, if it's going to be a stunt, who's coming in a blitz. All of this is going to help Nick Foles pre-snap. And Big V at that left tackle spot who's filling in for a future Hall of Famer and Jason Peters. All of these guys need to be able to help him out as well. Brandon Brooks, the other guard, is also a pro bowler. So this group up front and the intelligence that they possess has been a talking point this week and will be very big pre-snap in helping out Nick Foles because we know how much Mike Zimmer likes to disguise things with his number one ranked defense in the league. An intriguing matchup. Looking forward to that Sunday night. James Palmer live with the Eagles. We appreciate that, man. The Minnesota Vikings practicing today. Stefan Diggs getting in the end zone with the walk-off touchdown. The defense doing what they need to get them in position to be in this NFC Championship game. Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer speaking today. Uh, I, th I think, again, it goes back to the character of these guys. You, you know, when I talked to Teddy a week ago, it was, uh, you know, let's do what's, what you feel is best for the team. And Bradford, when he came back, he said, I don't want to be a distraction. Things are going good. You know, let's let's just, you know, I just want to get back out there, and, you know, because that's what I like to do. I like to go play and practice. And <clears throat> so these guys understand, um, you know, that things – Things are going pretty good, so there's no re real reason to rock the boat. Um, but it's kind of the character of our football team. 
you know, for us, it's outside stuff that's swirling around, um, and we've done a good job all year of putting our blinders up. And, and honestly, you know, the opinion of everybody outside this building, you know, it's not uh, it's not what really matters. So uh, we're we're taking to heart, uh, you know, what Coach Zam has for us, Coach Shermer, um, you know, and getting ready to go. Let's get back out to Eden Prairie. That's where Stacy Dales is in this Vikings team dealing with some injuries in that game. Andrew Sandejo, Adam Thielen, uh, both got dinged up. What can you tell us about their status, Stacey? Yeah, you know, Patrick, we all saw that collision with Michael Thomas uh, and Andrew Sandejo, the safety, who's been just really electric for this team this season alongside Harrison Smith at the position. Um, he was limited today. Again, I saw him in the locker room. Of course, he can't converse with us media members, but he looked pretty good. And uh, I think all signs are positive for him, though still going through the, the concussion protocol. And then as for the wide receiver, Adam Thielen, he's got over 1,200 yards receiving, leads the team this season. Uh, he was out yesterday. He was limited today. So again, positive news for this Vikings team. All signs positive for these guys playing perhaps on Sunday. Stacey, uh, this week we've looked at the last 10 teams that had walk-off wins in the playoffs and had a game after that. None of them were able to get the win. W what has Mike Zimmer uh, said about this team's character that maybe could uh, make us think that this team will be different? Well, you know, we just saw those clips from Coach Zimmer earlier on today, and I specifically teed him up with the question about the character of this team. And the reason I did it, Patrick, is because I've spent quite a bit of time with the Vikings this season, and that win that I witnessed on Sunday was magical. I don't know of a better word. People are using the word miraculous. But when I spoke with players in the locker room, there were palpable emotions. Guys like Brian Robison, who have been with this franchise for 11 years, and I said to Brian, have you ever been a part of a game like that? He said no, and he talked about it, and he welled up in tears. And I said, have you ever been part of a team like this? And he said, no, I haven't. In my 11 years, this is the, the highest level of character. There are no eagles, e egos within our football team. And that is sort of the consensus if you go through and talk to multiple players. And so when I asked head coach Mike Zimmer about the character, you heard him talk about it. It is a special character with this group. He's been around coaching a long time. But there is a, a unique feeling and vibe within this locker room. And I think the Minneapolis miracle with that Stefan Diggs catch, sort of uh, symbolic of what this team represents this season. Special yeah. group. Yeah, absolutely. If, if people believe in a team of destiny, uh, Stacey, I don't know how they could look at what happened last week and say that, that it would be any other team than this Minnesota Vikings team. Stacey Dales with the Vikings at Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Appreciate that. Stacey, the Vikings defense this season has been pretty consistent. We don't need to split the stats in the first eight games or the last four games or anything like that. They're second and first downs allowed. No one allowed fewer big plays than the Vikings. They make you work for it. Brian Billick did some work for them for you. Well, this Minnesota Viking defense is as advertised. In fact, this is the closest defense I've seen to that 2,000 record-setting group I had in Baltimore. They're outstanding, and they're very simplistic but creative in what they do with their simplicity. Let me show you what I'm talking about, particularly in third down where they are so good. You're going to see Harrison Smith and Xavier Rhodes. This looks like four-cross man, but they rotate into a three-deep. So the quarterback's expecting man, and this is a disciplined three-deep defense. Everybody gets to the proper areas. They hold off the receivers down the field, and then when you're forced to drop the ball off, even to a talented back like Kamara, they come screaming up and tackling. Now you're going to see Harrison Smith start to come down into the box, but he's not going to blitz. He's going to come down that allows the linebacker now with a five-man rush. So they've added a guy to the rush. Now you're thinking, okay, well, now it's got to be man. Uh-uh. They're going to get a five-man rush and still play zone behind it. Take away the throws down the field, limit the time that the quarterback has to throw the ball and get it down the field. Now here's where they get a little creative. They bring Harrison Smith down into the box. They bring him and the linebacker, but they're going to drop the defensive end. Again, confusing the quarterback. What am I seeing? It confuses the protection scheme. Here, Harrison Smith gets home. Now, okay, third and one. You got to be able to convert on third and one. Not so fast. Look how disciplined they are. How many times do you see these teams not fit up well with this kind of run? But the Minnesota Vikings, they're where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there. They're so hard to beat on third down. This is going to be as stiff a challenge as the Philadelphia Eagles have faced all year long. Appreciate that, Coach Billy. Hey, what's underneath that glove? What? What's going on with Tom Brady's hand? Is it gamesmanship? We're going to go back, figure it all out coming up here on Up to the Minute Live. And 
The Jags have had plenty of confidence all season, so could some first graders aid in that? The secret to beating Brady coming up on Up to the Minute Live. How do you win at business? Stay at La Quinta, where we're changing with stylish makeovers. Then, at your next meeting, set...